Hey, are you enjoying that phone over there? Yeah, it's fine. Well, what if you spent 15 times as much money on a phone that could do this? Wow, okay, that'd be, that'd be cool. It's folding. It moves. The screen. That's great. It's it great. Work. I'm happy for you. I can that's hold it up. that's awesome. You want to have your own though, right? No, no. That's okay. You enjoy it though. You enjoy it. I want you to like it too. No, I think you're no. jealous. I think you're jealous that your phone doesn't do this. Not jealous, but but happy for you. I hope you like it. It's moving. It's moving. The display, the pixels, they're folding. Oh my god. This was so worth it. <laughs> So I've been backing off from covering the leaks as of lately, but Google leaked this one, so I thought it was okay. The Pixel Fold, name and unveil date officially confirmed, showcasing Google's sixth attempt at a tablet, but first attempt at a folding one. And I gotta admit, as much as I've ridiculed Android phones and foldables throughout the years, this one looks pretty freaking good. I mean, for one, the camera bump is quite thin, and in my opinion, it's the best possible version of the camera bump because it's the visor design, so that eliminates the camera wobble. And in my view, the Oppo Find N was kind of the right approach to how to do a foldable right. Make it be more of an emphasis on being a portable smaller phone that unfolds into a mini tablet. Hopefully that means you can also keep the price down, but where I struggled with foldables in the past all came down to the software optimization, and a lot of the time that came down to the aspect ratio. And that's where I felt like even Android tablets I've reviewed in the past were never able to quite optimize and scale that well, just because it feels like Android has to optimize for so many different screens, but this is Google we're talking about here. They actually run and own Android, so I feel like if there's anybody that can get the screen optimization down, it's probably them, rather than trying to compete with one UI on top of Android like we've seen with Galaxy Folds. And sure, the interior bezels are a little bit thick. In fact, it's actually kind of looking like the forehead is a bit thicker than the chin. No, no, Google, we don't do that here. But who am I to complain? I'm trying to get by with a phone with big bezels like this, but hey, these things you can find for like a hundred bucks, whereas the Pixel Fold, considering how Google tends to try to undercut a lot of the iPhone flagships, my guess is this is going to be somewhere in the $1,600 to $1,700 price range. So certainly on the high end, and I don't think this is going to change anyone's perspective when it comes to foldables are a good deal because it's like buying a phone and a tablet put together, except it's a phone experience that's worth $500 and a tablet experience that's worth $400. So combine the two, you get a $1,700 compromise, but I acknowledge that there are those people out there that like having a two-in-one and like having a hybrid device, and Google in the past few years seems to have kind of found their stride, at least with their more affordable phones. A lot of people seem to be appreciating the A-series, and I even heard a lot of people say that the Pixel 7 Pro was the best Android phone of 2022. Some of you may disagree with that, but to me it seems like they're finally starting to find their voice in how to make software optimization good, and maybe that's helpful that they have their own custom silicon, so I assume the G2 chip can go along with that in the Pixel Fold. And of course, Pixels from the beginning has always had the strong suit in regards to camera performance, so great camera, and I'm sure these days, considering the folds are so expensive, you've got to have 120 hertz on both the outside display and the inside display. And with the proper implementation of Material U, I think this could be one of the cleanest, most elegant, and well-executed foldables of all time. So if there's any hope at convincing Apple to one day make their own foldable, I think it's getting everyone else in the industry on board and proving that there's demand for phones like this because obviously Apple's probably better at anybody than getting us to spend more than a thousand dollars on a phone because iPhones dominate the premium smartphone space, which is why even though we talk about Galaxy Z folds and flips and things, they don't really sell as well as Samsung or Google's mid-range phones. That's where Android, I think, really tends to shine, not so much in the higher-end pricey spaces. So if Samsung and Google and everybody else can convince Apple that there is a market here in the $1,500 plus segment for two-in-ones that are mini tablets that fold up into phones, then that's our best bet at Apple doing it. But if the Pixel Fold is not all that great and not that many people convince themselves to buy it, then I think Apple will likely see the sales figures and decide this ain't worth it for us. This is going to complicate our supply chains too much and we can just raise the price of the iPhone 15 Pro or 16 Ultra to well over $1,500 without it folding and iPhone people will still 
buy it, right? Because we buy anything, as long as it's got that beautiful logo. But how do you feel about the Pixel Fold? Is this a last ditch attempt for Google to try tablets or are you excited for it? Is this the first folding phone that you're actually compelled to get? Feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. This is Ralph Sheep here and I'll see you all in the next one.